G'day, welcome back to another episode of Toggle. Well, an interesting start to today. I had an email this morning from uh, the local paper, The Advocate, and because our planning approval has actually gone to submission now, it's, uh, it's uh, been, well, they call it in exhibition, which means it's up for the public to view for two weeks, and then they've got their say as to whether we can go ahead with that or not. Anyway, um, yeah, the local paper, The Advocate, they saw the application, they said, hey, we'd love to do a little article in the paper. So I'm just up here with Kay, and a photographer from The Advocate, and we're just gonna do a little bit of a photo shoot, then uh, there's gonna be a story. So that's pretty cool, gives it a little bit of publicity. So uh, that and more to come in this episode, stay tuned. Now grab a shot of the both of you. If yep. we have a little bit of the paddock, a little bit of this paddock, a little bit of this in the background, is that okay? Yep, that'll be fine. Yep, that's cool. That's quite possibly. Yeah. That's our little photo shoot done, nice and simple, and uh, when I see the article, I'll get it put up on the video for you. Well, this is the picture and the start of the article, but I'll put a link to the full article in the descriptions below for you. Okay, well, yesterday morning I was up at the block and I wanted to put some new bars into the, uh, the, the beehive. So what I needed to do was remove four frames of honey in order to put the new bars in between. What I'm trying to do is, where I've got these frames uh, in the Langstroth hive, I just want to put a single top bar in, see if they will build onto that, and then I can transfer that over into the Kenyan top bar hive. So that's the theory, anyway. So when I opened up uh, the main, the biggest of the hives, we had four of these beautiful uh, frames of honey, they just really, <laughs> they're solid, they're really heavy too. So just beautifully capped, completely solid, uh, completely done. That's exactly what you're looking for when you're extracting your honey. All right, so I've got four of them in there. There was a lot more too, but I just took four out of one hive. Um, so we need to extract them. Now you saw me do that a little a couple of videos ago with uh, the press. This isn't a press, this is a press. So I upgraded, because there's no way I'm doing all that in that tiny little press. So this is more like what I was expecting to get when I bought the other one, but I bought the other one in a rush. Didn't realize. Handle, really big strong handle, comes out nice and easy. I can set it to the right height that I need very quickly, as you can see base plate in it is really solid, heavy base plate. Uh, so that must be probably four or five mil thick, really good. And not actually attached either, it's just a little hole, or not a hole, like a little bit of pipe in there so that that just sits on there. This is gonna work so much better. At least I hope so. I'm sure it will, I've not used it before. Uh, all stainless steel, beautiful, nice big solid tray. And so the honey will run out all around the outside edge and then just gather up and pour out over this lip. So I'll just have to have a container under it. So yeah, that's, that's gonna make life a whole lot easier. What I'm intending on doing as well is I'm gonna cut some of that honeycomb out into like little rectangles, pop them into the jars first, and then I'll pour honey in over the top. So you'll, I'll have these nice jars of honey and you'll be able to see through and see the honeycomb inside. Should look really schmick. Alrighty, so uh, I need to get this set up and get started on doing that. Right, so I've got a selection of jars here. I'm trying to get this camera angle worked out, it's really bad. I either can't get the table in or I can't get me in. I can't move the camera too much further back, so I'm gonna stoop a little. Uh, I've got a selection of jars here, some nice tall ones, some other smaller jars, but what I'll do is I'll start to cut into this comb, put pieces into all the jars. Any of the bits that are a bit rough and doesn't come out so well will go straight into here 
and then once I've got everything cut off and into here, I can then start to press this, get the honey out. I've got a nice big stainless steel bowl here to catch that honey, and we'll see how we go. Okay, so I'll start with this one. It's a fairly uh, even, like it doesn't bulge too much. It's a nice width all the way through. Now I can tell by these wires that you may be able to see there, but I know that there's three wires running through this one, which is fine because that's going to uh, be about the width I want to cut the honeycomb out for the jars anyway. starting to run out. So now I need to get uh, all the rest of this trim popped into there and then we can press it. And see what I mean about some of them um, are a lot thicker than they should be. This one's blown right out to, to that fat and it should be that skinny. Blown right out here. Um, hey, it's extra honey but not so good for putting into the jar. This one has no wires in it. Wait till you see this one. Fantastic. You could just hook into that. <laughs> oh, bend that over and push that down into there. That's awesome. Nice and quick. Let's trim this frame, clean this frame up a little bit as well. I don't think this one's got wires in it either. No? Awesome. Now some people have a centrifuge. Oi! Some people have a centrifuge. They simply slice off the caps of the honey on both sides, pop it into a frame inside a big barrel, it spins it around and centrifugal force will pull all the honey out. But uh, I'm not that well set up yet. So for me, it's just pressing it out. And you can't do that with a Kenyan top bar either. Not yet, I'm working on it. The 
Oh, we lost it. Okay, that's all four frames empty now. Now the front part will get the squish it. Only after I clean my hands. Mmm. Beautiful. I will go wash them though. Okay, so the assembly. That's you out of the way, stand back a bit. There we go. Alright. So that's uh Full probably it is on this side to there at the back it's a bit lower but let's get that in. See the honey starting to come out already. Maybe, maybe it's showing up. I'll zoom in it for you in a minute. It's just about getting all of the air out and pressing it down and getting it ready, uh, taking up all that space that's in there. Then we'll start to see all the honey coming out. Here she comes. A lot of it's oozing out around the bottoms here. This would be a good press as well for me to use uh, for small batches of apple cider uh, when we've got the grapes making some wine, that sort of thing. But it's going to work just great for honey. And see it pulsating out like as each set of cells burst open and out it comes. seeing too is it was higher at the front to start with and it stayed that way the whole way down so I probably next time should keep it like get everything in there break it down get it nice and level before I wind down I think So there you have it, pressing honey with the big press, uh, working a whole lot better than massive amount of honey coming out of there, so that's really good. I'm going to finish this off and pour it into the jars and whatnot, and uh, then get on with cooking some of my dinner. So uh, I'll leave this part of the episode, and I'll catch you up at the block shortly. Well, we've got a beautiful day today. As you can see uh, on the trailer there, that's two of the beehives that I build, all flat packed 
they're actually going to be shipped up to Catherine in the Northern Territory. So Kay and I are just taking them for a run down to Deloraine, which is where we need to deliver them to. But we thought we'd stop at our favourite place, uh, Elizabeth Town Bakery and Cafe, uh, and just grab a bite to eat on our way up there. But yeah, we're going to drop this and then on our way back we'll stop up to the block, do a bit of watering, and we're going to harvest some pepper berries as well. So uh, we'll see you up the block shortly. Well, that was a nice little trip down to Deloraine and back again. Those uh, two beehives have been dropped off and now we're just back up at the block. It's fairly late in the afternoon, but we just wanted to swing by, do a bit of watering. So Kate's over the back there watering the garden. And uh, I'm just gonna clear a little bit of a space down to one of the pepperberry trees we found that's absolutely loaded with pepperberries, but it's in a heap of waist high grass in a creek gully. So I need to get down and clear around that. We don't want any uh, snake issues. So I'll get the brush cutter into that, clear that out, and then we'll go and pick some pepper berries. All right, so this is the tree I was clearing around. The reason being, as you can see up here, look at the masses of these pepper berries. I've never seen one produce so thickly before in bunches like that. So we've laid down a bit of corrugated iron as well um, so that we can walk on that. Yeah, K's in Crocs, but we are on the tin. So yeah, crocs we're gonna- Crocs beat snakes, so I'm fine. <laughs> well, that's true, crocs do beat snakes. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna get to picking some of these pepper berries so that we'll have some nice fresh ones for cooking in uh, over the next few weeks.
Well, that's it for another episode. It's a little shorter, I know, but the last couple have been uh, a bit longer, so I guess it all comes out, doesn't it? So uh, anyway, I've just finished doing the video that you've just watched, and now I'm just about to add the piece I'm filming onto the end. <laughs> that's the process. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. Like I said, a bit of a short one. Sorry about that. Uh, maybe next week will be a bit of a longer one. It's just that I didn't get a lot done this week, so uh, therefore I only had a little bit of content. Anyway, I hope you have a great weekend. Stay safe. Have a good week next week. I'll catch you next Friday. Cheers. Thank you.